Iran Flight 655 was a commercial flight operated by Iran Air that flew from Bandar Abbas, Iran to Dubai. On Sunday, July 3, 1988, the aircraft was shot down by the US Navy-guided missile cruiser USS Vincennes, killing all 290 passengers and crew aboard, including 38 non-Iranians and 66 children. The Vincennes was inside Iranian territorial waters at the time of the shootdown. Quick reminder before starting the video, let us know in the comments below which air disaster to uncover next. And don't forget to leave your feedback. Airbus A300B2, flown by Captain Ayosin Rezaian, left Bandar Abbas at 10.17 a.m. Iran time, 27 minutes after its scheduled departure time of 9.50 a.m. It would have been a 28-minute flight. After takeoff, it was directed by the Bandar Abbas Tower to turn on its transponder and proceed over the Persian Gulf. The flight was assigned routinely to Commercial Air Corridor Amber 59, a 20-mile wide lane on a direct line to Dubai Airport. The short distance made for a simple flight pattern. Climb to 14,000 feet, cruise for a short time and descend into Dubai. At that same time, the Vincennes USS guided missile cruiser, under the command of Captain William Rogers and fitted with the then new AEGIS combat system. Vincennes dispatched the Persian Gulf in 1988 for the support of Operation Earnest Will. Operation Earnest Will was the American military protection of Kuwaiti-owned tankers from Iranian attacks during the Iran-Iraq War. The Vincennes had been rushed to the area after Iran had purchased silkworm missiles from China, and the AEGIS cruiser was the only type of vessel that could counter the threat. On the morning of July 3rd, the Vincennes crossed into Iranian territorial waters during clashes with Iranian gunboats. Earlier in the day, the Vincennes, along with Iranian gunboats, had similarly violated in Omani waters, until challenged by an Omani warship. Within seconds of liftoff, the Vincennes detected Flight 655. Sophisticated as the radar is, it cannot determine the size or type of aircraft identification. Lieutenant Commander begins a routine to establish whether the aircraft is a friend or foe. His first step is to consult a commercial air schedule. He looks to see if there's a passenger flight due to depart from Bandar Abbas at this time. He's confused the schedule lists departures in local time. But Lieutenant Commander is unsure whether that means the time in Bandar Abbas or Bahran time, which is used on the ship. And they have almost 27 minutes delay due to a passenger with a visa problem. So the Vincennes now tries to contact the plane directly on a military distress frequency, but there's no response. One 20 miles from you. You are standing into danger and may be subject to United States defensive measures. Request you remain clear of me. The Vincennes mistakenly identified the Iranian aircraft as an attacking military fighter. The officers identified the flight profile being flown by the Airbus A300B2 as being similar to that of an official aircraft F-14 Tomcat. For all its state-of-the-art technology, the Vincennes didn't have a radio tuned to civil air traffic control frequencies. So the only option left is for the ship to call the mystery aircraft on the civilian international air distress frequency. But there's still no answer from Flight 655. With the incoming plane closing in on the Vincennes at 8 kilometers every minute. 48 kilometers away, the Airbus with its 290 passengers climbs out over the Persian Gulf. They have no idea that they've been misidentified and are flying into danger. With the incoming plane in only 48 kilometers away, Captain William Rogers seeks permission from headquarters to shoot it down if it comes too close. As Flight 655 crosses the critical 37 kilometer threshold, the Vincennes warns it once again to alter course or risk the consequences. After the plane has failed to respond to warning, with the civilian jet 11 nautical miles away, the Vincennes fired two SM-2MR surface-to-air missiles. The first missile broke the aircraft in two and damaged the tailplane and right wing. After the engagement, 290 passengers and crew are dead. The Vincennes crew realized that the plane had been a civilian airliner. Captain Rogers has made a fatal mistake. 
He's destroyed an Iranian passenger jet flying in an international air corridor. 290 passengers and crew are dead. Why does Flight 655 never respond? Vincennes transmits a total of 10 radio warnings, but the Vincennes transmits 7 warnings on a military frequency that Flight 655 cannot receive. The Vincennes broadcasts only 3 warnings on the civil distress frequency, but they don't clearly identify exactly who the ship is trying to contact. Vincennes radio crew are citing the aircraft's ground speed, but Captain Rezian's instruments show the airspeed. Flight 655's indicated airspeed could have been 50 knots, slower than the 350 knot ground speed cited by the Vincennes. This version was finalized in a report by Admiral William Fogarty, entitled Formal Investigation into the Circumstances Surrounding the Downing of Iran Air Flight 655. Only part of this report has been released which has drawn criticism from many observers. The unclassified version of a congressional report of a US Navy investigation headed by Admiral William Fogarty did not accurately show the location of the USS Vincennes at the time of the incident. But some years later he admitted on American television show Nightline that the Vincennes was inside Iranian territorial waters when it launched the missiles. The Vincennes had been nicknamed Robocruiser, both in reference to the AEGIS system and to the supposed aggressive tendencies of its captain. The Iranian government believed at the time and has repeatedly claimed that the Vincennes knowingly shot down a civilian aircraft. At the time of the incident, the US Navy was carrying out operation against Iran directly attacking Iranian naval vessels and installations and Iranian offshore oil facilities. The Iranian government believed at the time of the incident that the attack was intended as a warning to Iran that if it did not agree to some form of armistice with Iraq, the USA would itself directly attack the Iranian mainland and Iranian civilians in order to assist Iraq. On November 6, 2003, the International Court of Justice concluded that the US Navy's actions in the Persian Gulf at the time had been unlawful. The US government issued notes of regret for the loss of human life, but never admitted wrongdoing, accepted responsibility, nor apologized for the incident. Officially, it continues to blame Iranian hostile actions for the incident. The men of the Vincennes were all awarded combat action ribbons. Lustig, the air warfare coordinator, won the Navy's Commendation Medal for heroic achievement. At a news conference on the 2nd of August 1988, then-Vice President George H.W. Bush declared, I will never apologize for the United States of America, I don't care what the facts are, in reference to the incident. I'll never apologize for the United States of America, ever, I don't care what the facts are. On February 22, 1996, the United States agreed to pay Iran 61.8 million US dollars in compensation, $300,000 per wage earning victim, $150,000 per non-wage earner for the 248 Iranians killed in the shootdown, but not for the aircraft which was estimated to be worth approximately $30 million. The process of compensation itself proved a major cause for controversy. Again, by comparison to the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103, lawyers representing the families of the victims of the Pan Am 103 bombing struck a deal with Libya involving a $10 million payment to each victim's family. Case brought by Iran in 1989 against the US in the International Court of Justice, the payment of compensation was explicitly characterized by the US as being on an ex gratia basis, and the US denied having any responsibility or liability for the incident. That wraps up the video, thank you for watching, give it a thumbs up for the video. If you are not subscribed, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified about our uploads. I'll see you next week.